boys and girls, I'm so excited to be here with you online this morning for Church at Home. Hey, I had planned on going live on YouTube, but apparently I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to get some technical help and maybe try to do it again next week or the week after. But for today, here we are. I want you to go grab your Bibles and meet me back here. We're going to be in Ruth today. See you soon. All right, so we have our Bibles and we are open to Ruth chapter 3 this morning. Now we've learned a lot about Ruth. We learned first of all about her mother-in-law whose name was Naomi. And Naomi was married to a man named Elimelech. And they lived in Bethlehem and that was a very special town. I wonder if you can think of something else really special that happened in Bethlehem. Hmm, Bethlehem sounds very familiar to me. Maybe we'll learn more about it in a couple of weeks. But they lived in a town called Bethlehem and they that was where everybody loved God. Everybody in Bethlehem knew about God and was part of God's family. But there was a famine in the land and that means that they didn't have any food all of a sudden. The crops weren't growing very well and everything and so they decided, Elimelech and Naomi with their two sons decided to move to a town called Moab. And in Moab, not everybody knew about God. In fact, most people didn't know about God and most people were very confused about who God was. Some people thought there were lots of different gods. And some people thought that you had to do some really crazy and not good things in order to make the gods pleased with you. And so there were lots of weird things going on in Moab, but they had food. So Naomi and Elimelech decided to move there. They moved there and their two sons got married to two women, Orpah and Ruth. Now remember Ruth? That's the name of the book that we're in, of the book of the Bible that we're in. And so Orpah and Ruth were from Moab, so they probably didn't know about the one true God. But Naomi and Elimelech did. Well, eventually Elimelech died. And then Naomi's two sons died. And so the, all that was left was Naomi and Orpah and Ruth. And it was a very sad time for Naomi because everyone in her family except for her daughters-in-law had died. And she wasn't living in her hometown. So she decided to move back to Bethlehem. Well, when she decided to move back to Bethlehem, Orpah and Ruth planned to go with her. So they packed up all their things and they got ready to go. And Naomi said, you girls stay here, go back to your parents' house. I'm going to go back to my hometown, but you have lives here, so you should stay in Moab. And Orpah was very, very sad and to, to be leaving Naomi, and she decided to stay with her family and do just what Naomi told her to do. But Ruth cried and cried and said, No, mother, you are, you are like my mother now. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And that was a very special thing. Well, once they got to Bethlehem, they didn't have any food because normally they needed a man in the household to be able to provide them with money and with food and with shelter and all of that kind of stuff. It's a little bit different than it is today where a woman can work and provide for her household. But back then, they kind of relied on the men in the family to do that kind of stuff, and it was just Naomi and Ruth. So Ruth asked Naomi, can I please go into a field where all of the harvesters are working and pick up the grain behind the harvesters so that we'll have something to be able to eat? And that's actually, it was kind of like a tradition that poor people were allowed to do this. People who didn't have any money were allowed to go behind the harvesters and anything that they dropped by accident, the poor people were allowed to pick up and bring home to their families. And that was called gleaning. Well, Ruth went and she happened to go to the field of a man named 
Boaz. Now we learned last week that that was very, very special because Boaz was a special person in Ruth and Naomi's life. Boaz was their family redeemer. Now I told you last week that we were going to learn what that means today and I'm so excited to dive in with you. We're in Ruth chapter 3. When Naomi found out whose field Ruth had been gleaning in, she was so excited. She said, Ruth, this is, this is God's way of taking care of us because Boaz is our family redeemer and he will take care of us. And so she made a plan. She told Ruth to meet Boaz when he was alone in the field and lie down on his feet. Now that seems like kind of a silly thing to do, doesn't it? Lie down at somebody's feet. But this was kind of a way to show that that she was um, that she was uh, ready to to marry him. Okay, and and Ruth had shown integrity and had shown uh, loyalty, and so there was you know there, this could have been seen as like. Oh, well, this must not be a very a very nice woman to be doing that, but because of who Ruth was, because of her character, she was able to do this and show Boaz that she really just needed help. She just needed him to be their family redeemer. And so she was really relying on hope through this. She was really hoping that Boaz was going to choose to do the right thing too. And so Ruth did what her mother-in-law asked her to do. And she went and she laid down on Boaz's feet after he had fallen asleep in the field one night. Now he was probably in the field, maybe he was like making sure that no thieves came to, to rob the field. Maybe he was kind of watching over his field in some way. Um, but he was he had fallen asleep in the field and Ruth came over and she uncovered his feet and she laid down on them. <laughs> I hope they weren't too stinky for her. Well, eventually Boaz woke up and he noticed that Ruth was there at his feet and he was like, what are you doing here? What's going on? And Ruth said, Boaz, you are my family redeemer. Well, I mean, essentially she's, she was asking him to marry her. That's really what it comes down to. And she said, she said, Boaz, will you, will you help me and Naomi? because you are our family redeemer. See, a redeemer saves somebody. So Ruth and Naomi had gone through lots of different hardships. Now, if you and I were together in person, I would ask you to try to come up with some of the hard things that Ruth and Naomi have done. So maybe it, like, I'm gonna write some of my ideas up here, but I want you to, to yell them out, yell out your own ideas as a family too. How did Ruth and Naomi have a hard time? What kind of hardships did they go through? I'm going to write that they had no food. That was a hardship. They had to travel a long way. I'm going to write that down. That was a hardship. That was really hard for them. Both of their husbands had died, and I also wrote sons died because Naomi's sons had died too. That was a hardship. I'm going to write down that they left their family and their friends. You know, Ruth decided to leave all of her family and friends behind in Moab. Naomi had already made that hard decision to move to Moab and leave behind her family and friends. She may have met new friends there in Moab and decided to leave them again.
I'm going to write down that they had no man in their family. Remember, that was a hardship back then because the men were the ones who uh, kind of took care of the family. Did you come up with the same ones as I did? Did you come up with any that are different from my list? I bet you did. There were a lot of hardships for Ruth and Naomi. Well, when Ruth asked Boaz to be her family redeemer, that meant that she was asking him to take care of these hardships for her, to basically to cover them up, to, to not make her not have to worry about that anymore. And Boaz said, yes. Boaz was a rich man. He had fields that and, and, and workers, he had servants who worked for him in the fields, harvesting the grain. He had a big house. He had everything that he needed and wanted. And Ruth and Naomi were quite destitute. They didn't have really anything that they needed. And Boaz decided that he was going to be their family redeemer. In the same way that Ruth uncovered Boaz's feet, Boaz decided to cover up the hardships of Ruth and Naomi. That's what a redeemer does. He covers up the hardships of Ruth and Naomi. It's like they're not even there anymore. You can't even see them. Boys and girls, that's what a redeemer does. Now, let's think for a minute about what kinds of sins separate us from God because that really is our true hardship as, as people living in this world is that we are separated from God. That's the worst thing that is going on in this world. Even today, it seems like there are a lot of bad things happening in the world, but the worst thing is that our sins separate us from God. So let's come up with some of those sins. Can we come up with some examples of sin? Things that make God sad when we do them? Let's think of some. Lying is a sin. Now the same thing, I want you to, I want you to shout out the ones that you can think of, okay? Stealing is a sin. Breaking promises, it kind of goes along with lying, doesn't it? It's kind of the same thing. Swearing, using bad words. I wrote using God's name wrongly. Using God's name when you're not talking to God or talking in, about God in a praise in in a praiseworthy way. God says that disobeying parent your parents is a sin. We could come up with many, many more, but these are just some examples. Now, here's the thing. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and we're going to talk more about Jesus in just a couple of months, but the blood of Jesus covers up our sins. Now, look, you can kind of see through this, can't you? But then when I put it over this, can you see? Can you see those sins anymore? You can't, can you? I'm trying to get out of your way. You can't see them anymore. Even though, even though you can see through this, you can see through it when I hold it up over myself, but when we go over, over this, you can't see them anymore. They're still there. You know, when we do something wrong, there's still going to be consequences. But Jesus 
covers up the sin and that allows us to be close to God again. That is the hardship of our lives, is being far away from God. But now, because of Jesus, we can be close to God again. We have hope. Just like Ruth held on to hope, we can hold on to hope. I want to tell you the end of the story of Ruth, because today's the last day that we're going to talk about Ruth, and I'm so happy to be able to tell you that Ruth and Boaz got married. And they didn't just get married, they had a baby. That baby's name was Obed. And that baby became the grandpa of David, King David. And David was the great, 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 grandpa of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Because of Ruth's faithfulness, because of Ruth's devotion to Naomi, she got to be part of Jesus's family line. We are going to start learning about King David next week, and I cannot wait to see you then. But before we go, I want to tell you your new memory verse, okay? Your new memory verse comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, and it goes like this. God blesses whose hearts are pure. They'll see God. God blesses those who work for peace. They will be called children of God. Boys and girls, can you say that with me? I've got some hand motions for us. And it actually comes directly from the Beatitudes, which we're learning together this year. And it also comes directly from a song uh, that is on YouTube if you search Beatitudes song, uh, or Beatitudes song for kids, it'll come up. It's called Advanced Motions Beatitudes song. So here we go. God blesses whose hearts are pure, they'll see God. God blesses those who work for peace, they will be called children of God. Matthew 5 eight to nine. Let's say it one more time together before we go. God blesses whose hearts are pure. They'll see God. God blesses those who work for peace. They will be called children of God. Matthew 5, eight to nine. Very good, my friends. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.